Good morning. As always, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us on My Doctor. My name is Winnie Lubembe. Now, according to World Health Organization, malnutrition is a single threat to public health. And globally, it contributes to 45% of deaths among children under the age of five. And I know most of us, when we think about or when we hear um, the term malnutrition, I think the first thing that comes to mind is arid and semi-arid areas. But the truth is, it can affect anybody. So how does this come about? Well, we have that and much more in our show today and we'll be discussing malnutrition you do not want to miss anything on the same but as always before we get into the discussion take a look at this video all right welcome back glad you're still with us of course very informative video on the same but then again we're live so that means you can ask any question that you have in regards to today's topic remember we're focusing on malnutrition and we'll try as much as possible and answer them before we end uh, the show and um, i'm glad to be joined by george he is back of course to help us understand more on malnutrition so george how are you this morning i'm great thank, thank you, you for so having me. and thank you so much for coming thank so you. before we get into the the discussion can you introduce yourself all right. Hi, viewers. Uh, my name is George, George Kamau, um, founder and managing director of um, Weight Management Center. So basically, we deal with weight, how to you know, lose weight, gain weight, how to maintain it. Mm -hmm. And we, we try as much as we can to use uh, natural methods that are safe, that are you know, um, beneficial for the body. Mm -hmm. And yeah, basically that's what we do, that's All our right. outfit. Okay, all right, and of course you're the best person to talk about malnutrition. And I think we were discussing this when the video was playing, that most of us, most of the time when we think about malnutrition, we think areas where it's dry and you know, there's no, let's say rain, where they can cultivate, you know, yes. some of those things, but it affects anybody and let's say everybody, but of course the children are the most affected. So let's go back to the basics. What is malnutrition and how does it come about? All right. Um, I think like the word says, malnutrition. Mm -hmm. Mal means lack of or inadequate supply of. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about malnutrition, it's inadequate supply of nutri nutrients that you need in your body. Okay. And I, that is basically, there are many reasons why, actually there are about three main reasons why you'd be malnourished. And I think we'll be looking into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. All right. And you know, when we talk about malnutrition, there's undernutrition, there's overnutrition, and we're thinking, okay, what is... What does that mean exactly? Does it mean that, let's say, when you consume something, maybe too much of it, it becomes a problem, especially? Exactly. exactly. Regardless of how nutritious they are. Uh, let, me, let me put it like this. Okay. Um, just to use a simple example, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you could, you, you could get problems because of too much oxygen in your system. It's called oxygen toxi toxicity. Okay. You could get uh, too much, if you had too much water, you have water toxicity. So water is good, but too much of it, again, mm -hmm. you know, tends to become unbeneficial and, and kills. Okay. Uh, too much of oxygen, again, the same, same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's the same, same idea behind nut nut nutrients. So mm -hmm. if you have too much of it, then uh, you, you want to strike a balance. And that's what the body is all about. It's about mm -hmm. a delicate balance. Yeah. Not, not to be over, not to be under. So you want to just strike it just right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and, and like what you said, delicate, it's, it's, it can be difficult. It can you be, know, to, yeah, to know yeah. when is, is, is the exact least amount of nutrients that you need. Now, when we talk about um, nutrients, especially that are very beneficial to different parts of the body, um, what exactly do we mean and how much do we need? Because like you said, delicate, like it's very difficult for us to know this is literally the exact amount of calcium or any other thing that we need for the body. So what are the most, let's say, basic nutrients that we need for the body to function normally? All right. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you're to look at the entire makeup of the body mm -hmm. uh, and, and when you look at nutrition, we're basically looking at the cell, feeding the cell. Mm -hmm. So the cells, um, just, just to run it down, the cells come together to form uh, tissues, tissues come together to form organs, organs together to form the body system, mm -hmm. and then we have the entire body. Okay. So when you feed the cell, then everything else is fed. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are different kind of cells that will require different kind of nutrients, nutrients at various yeah. times. Mm -hmm. But the most basic is you, you'd have something like we have iron, uh, which basically is for hemoglo hemoglobin, mm -hmm. which is the red blood cells. Yeah. Then you'd have something like calcium for the bones, magnesium also for the bones. Mm -hmm. You'd have folic acid, especially for the growth, especially for young uh, and, and lactating mums, you'd, you'd need that. You, you want, um, what else? Uh, there's quite a range. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm trying to compose yeah. all of them together. Mm -hmm. But when, I, I think 
the proper question to ask is mm -hmm. not which ones, mm -hmm. but how should you supply should, them? Yes. Uh, because if you're to go looking for all these many nutri nutrients, there are mm -hmm. about over 20. Yeah. So you, you'll be looking at, do I have the right calcium? Do I have the right magnesium? Do I have the right iron? Mm -hmm. Do I have uh, selenium? Do I have chromium in my system? Mm -hmm. Do I have, you know, all yeah, this. You talk about uh, selenium again, and chromium, well, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it, it becomes a bit <laughs> tedious. Yeah. Yeah, and and it might, you might get disoriented and, and wonder, can I really achieve that? Mm -hmm. But it's possible to achieve. Okay. Uh, and uh, the way to go about it, I think, would be it, the, the, the basic way and the most um, clear way of going about nutrition mm -hmm. is have foods of various colors. Okay. Just that. That's, that's Where, simple. Yeah, okay. it's that simple. Okay. Just look at colors, mm -hmm. have as many colors, mm -hmm. uh, and then try and have all the colors within a week. Okay. So every week you're having at least something of a something. different color. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when you talk about colors, there's some things that well appear like for instance is it the purple cabbage most of us think that that is the most expensive thing that we can ever we can get um so when it comes to let's say getting yes the right colors of course they're nutritious in their own way yes. but then again when it comes to accessibility and affordability people will be like uh ah, this is let's say on the higher end so let me just go with the ones that i can afford all right yeah um if, if you look, and I love what God did, because uh, he didn't just create one, a color, uh, one vegetable with okay. just, uh, which is the only one you can get the specific, uh, specific color of. Okay. Uh, he created quite a number. Mm. So if you say we go with the purple cabbage, mm -hmm. uh, you don't get that a lot, mm. but you have an onion. Oh yeah. So and that's common. Mm -hmm. So it can supply the same mm -hmm. same things, mm -hmm. and and it becomes a bit easy when you look at it like that. Okay. Uh, say if we went for yellow uh, fruits mm -hmm. or yellow yellow uh, foods, the color yellow, yeah. You would you'd have uh, an orange. You have a banana. You you have um, what else? Uh, there's some kind of dates or that mm -hmm. look yellow. Mm -hmm. So you have quite a number. Quite, yeah. If you look at red, then you have tomatoes, mm -hmm. you have... Uh, beetroot. Yeah, you have uh, beetroot, you yeah. have watermelon, mm -hmm. you have all that. Mm -hmm. If you look at white, you have uh, potatoes are white. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a number. All Cabbages right. are white. So, so don't so say you can't afford cauliflower. Yeah. Yeah. You can have potatoes you know? and yes. it's still okay. Exactly. All right. So now let's start with um, undernutrition. What does that mean exactly? And um, what, what is some of the impact for undernutrition? All right. Mm -hmm. um, I think and and undernutrition mm -hmm. is is the most common type yeah, of malnutrition. malnutrition. Mm -hmm. uh, most people don't suffer from excess nutri nutrients mm -hmm. in the body. They mm -hmm. suffer from less of less, them. Yeah. And one of the main reasons why you would be undernourished is you're not eating the foods that supply to you mm -hmm. uh, nutrients that you can actually provide by mm -hmm. your own self. Okay. That you need them from outside your body. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Again, it comes down to the food choices. Mm -hmm. So if you don't get the food choices right, mm -hmm. then at some point you're you know, lacking something mm -hmm. uh, and, and you want to be careful about that. Okay. So undernourishment comes from food choices. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you get it basically as, eat as many diverse colors mm -hmm. as possible in a week, mm -hmm. preferably a fist size of every color okay. in a week. Because okay. when you talk of nutrients, uh, there is the macronutrients and then there is the micronutrients. Mm -hmm. The word macro and micro means that macro is basically you need in, in, a, in, a, lot, uh, mm -hmm. in a lot more mm -hmm. and micro you need it in a bit uh, nice. less dosages. Okay. So the macro is actually we need them in grammage. Mm -hmm. In the micro we need them in milligrams so there is okay. quite tiny of them. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and when you think of it, uh, of it like that, mm -hmm. it becomes possible to supply unto all of them. Okay. So undernourishment, like I said, mm -hmm. is when you get the food choices wrong. Okay. Yeah. And when you talk about like looking at it in the grams and milligram aspect, truth be told, most of us don't even think about that. We just think, okay, say so the, the most basic and that is vitamins, yes. Yes. carbohydrates mm. and protein and that's it. And then we don't think about it in terms of how much of this do I need? But like you said, fist size, that is the most simplest, like the b most exactly. basic thing that yeah. can help you. Now, um, for the children, I think, like you said, yes, undernutrition is, is a form of malnutrition that affects most people, and especially the children. Mm -hmm. And I've seen this, and, um, and, and most of the time you'd find that parents, especially when they're trying to wean the, the child, um, potatoes, I think that is the, the most common thing that most potatoes people use. Yes, <laughs> just exactly. <laughs> potatoes, and then we'll make a margarine inside, and that's it. Is that the right way to go about it in terms of winning the child? What exactly do they need? Because they're growing and they need all those nutrients. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, for a child who's growing, um, 
they need a diverse number of nutrients. Uh, primarily, they will need proteins. Proteins is highly because they're building muscle, they're growing up. Mm -hmm. Uh, and those are the building blocks. Mm -hmm. They will need lipids, which comes from fats. Okay. Uh, so, and, and again, fats are, we're talking about healthy fats. Healthy fats are naturally occurring fats, so they will need an avocado at some point. Mm -hmm. if, if you can get it, uh, coconut oil is, is an amazing, amazing uh, ingredient to add to it. The reason I say that is because if, if you look at uh, if you get to the chemical constitution of uh, coconut, coconut oil, oil yeah. it is almost 75% similar mm. to the lactating, the, the milk from the oh, mum, yeah, okay. to the colostrum, if I call mm -hmm, it that. Mm -hmm. So it is almost like breast milk, 75% are like. Okay. And it contains just ab ab about as much nutrients mm -hmm. as the In breast, breast milk. milk, yeah. Okay. So it's quite amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can add that to it, if, if uh, again, begin to mix the colors, mm -hmm. uh, pumpkin is amazing. Pumpkin, mm -hmm. uh, I see people putting in pumpkin in yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, they, they say it works on the brain, mm -hmm. uh, but precisely what works on the brain is, is fats, like I said, because mm -hmm. brain is uh, a bundle of, of cells mm -hmm. and that come together to form tissues and they're mostly made up of lipids. Mm -hmm. So the right lipids, when you get the right fats in there, you get, uh, you give the brain the capacity to grow mm -hmm. and that means uh, mental sharpness and, yeah. and even vision equity and all that so okay. yeah all right so what you what do you recommend okay let's say a child is like seven months they've mm -hmm. just been wind um, what would you advise the parents um, let's say a meal plan for them just for a day and then someone can decide to, to alter what would you recommend this this child to take let's say in the morning and then maybe for for maybe a 10 and then one and then or first of all how frequent are we supposed to feed our kids because there's a parents who are like um i'll just feed them when they're hungry and others have like a strict let's say time after maybe two hours or three hours they feed the child so what is the the correct time and two what is the right food for them to take so just give an example of let's say seven seven month old okay. baby okay. what are they supposed to take let's say in the morning until when they go to bed okay first and foremost how often should they feed yeah. Uh, I'm thinking every two hours or every three hours, mm -hmm. let them have something. Mm -hmm. uh, and then of course, they'll have a, a certain stretch of, of, of sleeping. Mm -hmm. so, but every two, three hours, mm -hmm. let them have something. Something, okay. something tiny, and then, you know, just to keep them going. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is to have the digestive system running throughout. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and they're quite active, so yeah, pretty much. Two to three hours is very uh, mm -hmm. recommended. Okay. Uh, as for what would be the ideal the diet ideal, plan, yes. um, now, they, they, they're still breastfeeding, but not exclusively. Not, yeah. uh, so they're getting their milk supply somewhat. Mm -hmm. uh, if you to give them milk, uh, say from cow milk and all that, mm -hmm. uh, I would go for the milk that has cream. Okay. So the cow milk that is yet to mm -hmm. you know, be re separated cream mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. milk part. Right. So I, I want to give them as much cream if, if I can as possible. Okay, why it, is that important? Uh, the cream is very important because it is highly nutritious. Oh, it yes. contains essential fats. fats yeah. And when we separate that to go uh, process and make ghee and, and butter and all that, mm -hmm. we're really doing a disservice to the milk, but mm -hmm. hey, it, it is what it is. <laughs> yes. Uh, but let them have, if they can, if especially from, from up country, if you can get the milk every single day, mm -hmm. then insist on that particular milk. Okay. Uh, then I would, as again, I would try and provide uh, as many colors. I would be going for colors again okay. in the foods, mm -hmm. but then mashed up. So uh, I would do whites. Mm -hmm. uh, I would combine that. I would have at least two, three colors every day mm -hmm. uh, on the plan. Okay. So that's that's one thing that they should have on. Right. So if you're doing whites, combine that p perhaps with a green, perhaps with a, a yellow. Mm -hmm. And then the following day, you still do the, you know, a different color. Do mm -hmm. a purple, do a black, do a... Uh, a red mm -hmm. like that. Okay. So combining those colors is very essential. Okay. Uh, if if they can, if they can, mm -hmm. let them have the cold processed coconut oil. Again, notice how I'm insisting on coconut, coconut oil. oil uh, yes. it, it it is it is an amazing uh, item. If you can get it, uh, please insist mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you cannot get it, mm -hmm. uh, don't beat yourself up. Mm -hmm. Uh, milk uh, and natural fats, like say an avocado. If yeah. you can mix up an avocado, do a pumpkin in there, mm -hmm. and then mash it up with the potato and all that, offer okay. that. All it's right. an amazing 
uh, okay. mix up. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, because I was about to ask you, well, wait, uh, the cold press, like you say, can be a little bit expensive. So for those who cannot afford that, well, what's an option? Yes. But like you've given us an avocado, it's, it's, just, it's just an amazing. Precisely. Okay, now you were talking about um, lipids are very good for, for the brain. Okay, let's talk about, let's say for the heart um, and the bones, which are very important, and lungs. What are some of the most important, you know, nutrients for the same so that this person or this child, um, you know, grows up because there's a, there's a, a case of wasting, yes. which of course you'll tell us what that is exactly and how does that come about? Um, for the heart, the heart is driven mostly when it comes to nutrients, mm -hmm. uh, apart from the making up of the heart, which is basically muscle, so mm -hmm. that's protein. Okay. Apart from that, uh, for the heart to pump, that mm -hmm. contraction, expansion, mm -hmm. it requires sodium and it requires potassium. Okay. Potassium. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so it requires those two. All right. So if you can supply some bit of salt mm -hmm. uh, into, into, you know, so marine salt is very nice, but if, you're, if you don't have marine, again, we, we, this is Nairobi especially, mm -hmm. uh, we don't have an ocean or around somewhere here. Okay. So get the same, the salt that we have, mm -hmm. just cook it up or mash it up nicely, okay. just a bit, mm -hmm. just to so, that, so that you supply sodium into the system. Okay. Uh, it goes to help the, the contracting and the expanding and yeah, the mm -hmm. pumping effect of the heart. Of the heart it requires okay. that. Mm -hmm. uh, for again, children are growing up, so you, we know they require uh, calcium. Mm -hmm. Now, calcium you, you can get that from milk. You can get mostly the mother offers that, mm -hmm. but again. Uh, that's an assumption, assuming mm -hmm. that they are on the correct diet because mm -hmm. uh, they will not supply what they did not eat. Okay. Uh, so if they're on the proper diet, you'll easily get that from the mm -hmm. breast milk. Mm -hmm. If you don't get that from the breast milk, get that from, uh, they can't do meat of course. So mm -hmm. uh, do um, anything that is green has okay. some bit of calcium. Mm -hmm. Anything that is red also has some bit of, of calcium. Mm -hmm. So combine that. Okay. Um, you can also do some bit of, uh, I think even milk from cow milk mm -hmm. is, is still, still good. good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if we can access the, the, you know, the milk from directly from the cow, mm -hmm. uh, these normally we have fortified, mi mm -hmm. milk is fortified with extra stuff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we, we, we make do with, mm -hmm. with that for... With what yeah. we can yeah. get, okay. All right, now when we talk about green and red, what exactly do we mean? And given that this is a very small child, most of them maybe would take um, mashed. So when we talk about green, because all of us know green is spinach and maybe skooma. Okay, so what are some of the examples of, let's say, um, green foods that the child is supposed to take and also red and any other color, like orange, you know, okay, orange is for carrots and any other thing. So when it comes to the colors, what exactly do, do we refer to? Um, think of a red. Eh? Okay. Let's, let's start with a red. Mm -hmm. uh, you, ca you can do a tomato mm -hmm. and by, by a tomato you, you just squeeze the inside part of the tomato into, you mm -hmm. know, and then mm -hmm. mix it up. So okay. li leave the, uh, the, the outside, outside alone. Yeah, okay. and then just squeeze the inside of it. Mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, what is called a tree tomato. Yes. Yeah, so you can also squeeze that. Mm -hmm. uh, same, same. Uh, and, and for green you can do, let's call a banana green. Okay. Yes. All right, uh, the, the, not the ripe banana. Yes, the okay. green banana. Okay. So try and, and you know, uh, just mash that up and, and just form it somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure mothers will just come up with a way of, you know, putting those things together. Yes. So ideally, uh, bananas and, and uh, the, the tomatoes and, and the tree mm -hmm. tomato, mm -hmm. those, that's a very mm -hmm. uh, nice area to go for. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how they, they, they will do with uh, vegetables, they can't do vegetables really. But okay. unless you really uh, make a smoothie out of it, I don't yes. know. Yeah, but yes. Okay. All right. So green banana, just to make it clear, green banana nile banana yakupikwa. Uh, just to make it simple. Yes, okay. Yes, Not yes. the right banana. Not the right banana. Okay. Yes. All right. Now, um, and overnutrition. Well, you talked about overnutrition is not much of a problem, but um, we've seen so many obese children, and of course, we also have adults. Okay, right now, we're still focusing on children. Um, but most of these children who are somewhat obese or overweight, um, is this a case of overnutrition? I would say not really overnutrition. Okay. It is. I wouldn't call it overnutrition. Right. I would call it a case of excess energy. All right. uh, that you're giving that baby uh, a lot more food that is giving them a lot of energy than they actually need. Mm -hmm. So it ends up that they have an excess energy or 
a lot more energy than they actually can consume, okay. and the body has to convert that to something else. Mm -hmm. Now, when I talk about excess energy in the body, I'm talking it is in the form of glucose. Okay. Uh, so glucose is a simple sugar. And the reason why the body has to convert that to something else mm -hmm. is because if glucose is left alone in the system, mm -hmm. that triggers di diabetes. Okay. And, 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 you know, mm -hmm. that's not a very nice thing. So the body is trying to offset that. Mm -hmm. and it converts it to fat. Mm -hmm. So it begins to store it up. Okay. Uh, you, you may want to, you know, just watch out on, on that. Mm -hmm. uh, babies do not need as much carbohydrates, mm -hmm. I would say, as okay. they need Proteins, proteins and fats, and fats. Okay. yes mm -hmm. so their diet should be if, if we were to talk about a hundred percent of each the three yeah mm -hmm. so there's fats there's proteins and there's carbohydrates mm -hmm. i would say do 40 percent fat 40 uh 30 percent protein and 20 uh what 30 percent carbohydrates, carbohydrates. Yes. okay if, but for yeah. most of us it's actually the reverse yes. <laughs> we do like too much carbohydrates exactly. and less exactly. of, of protein and fats okay and, and, and the beauty of of doing fats mm -hmm. uh if if you actually look at it is mm -hmm. it allows the brain to really mature up mm -hmm. and grow up mm -hmm. so that the baby has capacity to understand because mm -hmm. much as the body is growing up mm -hmm. remember the, the muscle of, of the of the brain wow. is also growing up mm -hmm. they, they're being curious what's that what's that so mm -hmm. they're asking a lot of questions mm -hmm. and there's a lot of brain activity okay. so we need uh, an infrastructure mm -hmm. to support that activity mm -hmm. And that infrastructure is built from lipids, which okay. is fats. Okay. So supply fats. Okay. And yes. when we talk about fats, what exactly are we referring to? Because um, you'd find that most of the time, okay, I think in, in most of the shows that we've done here and on hypertension and all that, we're talking about fats are not really, really good, like too much fats are okay. not really good. So when we talk about fats and like you say, fats are very, very good, especially for the brain development. What are we referring to and in what quantities? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when you're talking about fats, mm -hmm. I'm talking about naturally occurring fats. Okay. Uh, I think when people uh, hear fats, they think salad. Yes. Uh, I'm not talking about salad. Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking about naturally occurring fats. These things like avocado, mm -hmm. you can do nuts. Mm -hmm. uh, nuts, again, you wonder how do you do that? We, we have uh, butter, uh, the mm -hmm. peanut butter that is made out of nuts. Mm -hmm. So that a baby can do. Okay. Uh, you, instead of doing something like margarine and all that, mm -hmm. uh, do something like that is natural. Okay. Uh, natural, uh, again, if, if you can get, especially those who have cows somewhere mm -hmm. close by, mm -hmm. the, the cream, mm -hmm. that cream, mm -hmm. try and somehow add it to everything they're having. Okay. As much, insist, as much as they're having anything that they're having, so long as you're winning them, mm -hmm. add it to everything. Okay. Yes. All Let right. it be like a top dressing of something. Okay. Yeah. All right. And in what quantity? Is this a little bit or too much? Let's say for, for a child, do we give them half an avocado or quarter or full? Because, you know, when we say fats, most of us would go full on and give them, see, you said it's, it's good for the brain. We give them too much of it. So in quantities, um, how, how much are we supposed to give them? I, I would say uh, for, for a baby, mm -hmm. the entire day, uh, don't do more than half an avocado. Okay. Uh, so that's for the entire day. Remember, we said space out yeah, the meals the meal. two, three hours every three hours or two, every two hours they're having something. Mm -hmm. So dip a bit, uh, put a bit of avocado in there. Okay. In the next one, maybe do a bit of coconut oil in there. In the next one, do a bit of the top cream of the of the milk in there. Mm -hmm. In the next one, do a bit of butter, mm -hmm. uh, the, like the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and you know you're noticing that you're having you know fat all 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 through. Mm -hmm. So you measure about. Um, two tablespoons, uh, like the big tablespoons okay. of that, okay. and then you're good to go. All right, yeah. okay, don't go full on and, and yeah. <laughs> give you maybe more than they need. Exactly. Okay, now um, you also talked about micronutrients and macronutrients, yes. but now before we get into that, of course we, we've talked about undernutrition and a little bit of overnutrition. So what are some of the, um, let's say, causes or attributes to malnutrition? And when we say malnutrition, it's undernutrition and overnutrition. Okay. So, yeah, so what are some of the causes? Because, like we said, it's not only in the people who live, let's say, in the arid or semi-arid areas exactly. that get affected. Anybody can get affected. All right. Mm -hmm. um, to answer that, I, I would say there are three main causes mm -hmm. for that. Okay. And just to mention the name, perhaps you look deeply into it. Okay. Uh, the number one cause is you're not taking in what you ought to. So yeah. that's, food, that's food choices. Mm -hmm. Uh, so whatever it is that you're having on your plate mm -hmm. does not really constitute the entire balance of what nutrients you must you have. Okay. Then after that, uh, there's another bunch of people mm -hmm. who are taking what they ought, mm -hmm. but when it gets inside, okay. it's not properly absorbed. Okay. 
So there is lack of proper absorption. Exception. Why? Okay. Uh, we will talk about the why. Okay. Then there is a third bunch, which uh, they take what they ought, mm -hmm. and then it is properly absorbed, mm -hmm. but then it is not assimilated by the cell. Okay. So those are the three those categories. Those three categories. All right, so before we get deeper into now the three categories and the why, um, we need to get a very short break. But of course, when we come back, we still have so much to discuss. But just in case you have any other question in regards to today's topic, and that is on malnutrition, then feel free to call us live. The number is 0791478990. We still have so much to discuss. You do not want to miss. Stay with us. Right. Welcome back. Glad you're still with us. Remember, this is my doctor. Just in case you're tuning in, today we are focusing on malnutrition. And like we said, if you have any question in regards to the topic of discussion, then feel free to call us live. The number is 0791478990. And we have a question. And this is from Evelyn from Lamu. And she says she has a six-month baby going to seven months. So okay. she's asking what are some of the, let's say, proteins um, you would advise her to introduce to the child. All right. Um, when, when for a baby who's uh, getting wind, mm -hmm. of course, the proteins cannot come from meat. Okay. So the proteins have to come from mm -hmm. legumes. Okay. Uh, and legumes, you're talking about beans, you're talking about jahe, we're talking about uh, nuts and seeds. Mm -hmm. So especially with the nuts and seeds, okay. they, that, those are amazing places to get mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the proteins, proteins. from. Um, now, here, here is how God has put it, mm -hmm. uh, just so that we understand. Uh, if, if you're at a place where you don't have proteins from meat, mm -hmm. you can also get proteins from plants. Okay. Same, same. Mm -hmm. It is how God has just, you know, placed things mm -hmm. so that we are not, nothing is really outside our reach yes. for us as, for, uh, and as far as we need mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, live and, mm -hmm. and have proper health. Okay. So he's placed it within our reach. Mm -hmm. So for them, I would say, uh, think about getting a blender mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, nuts and seeds. Mm -hmm. So butter, like peanut butter is a very mm -hmm. wonderful source of that. Mm -hmm. uh, let them get, um, I, I don't know how they can do beans. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they can just, you know, just, just, just blend, blend them. I think yeah. for, for a baby, everything is just mm -hmm. be Mm -hmm. needs to be blended mm -hmm. so but let them think along those lines okay. yes. all right and now um, back to the topic we were addressing the causes and we said the, the three main which was food choice um, uh, uh, lack of absorption lack of absorption yes and then lack of assimilation exactly yes. so the three of them what you want to tell us in details how does this cause malnutrition okay mm -hmm. so um, let's start with um, the food, food choices choice. mm -hmm. and for food choice what happens is like I said if if you get all the colors mm -hmm. in a, per week you're getting all the, the various colors uh, of, of the foods mm -hmm. then be sure that you're getting what your body needs okay. that is that is how easy to know mm -hmm. you, you don't really need to be a scientist and you know get get, get down to the milligrams and mm -hmm. all that you don't need to be uh, an expert in this field mm -hmm. you simply need to get uh, you know that is red that is yellow that is green mm -hmm. that is blue okay. that is just do all the many colors. Okay. If you've done that every week, mm -hmm. and at least a fist size mm -hmm. of each color mm -hmm. per week, mm -hmm. then you're good to go. Mm -hmm. And I like what you say, it's per week, not per meal. Yeah, like it's per <laughs> week. Have, it's it's across the week. Dinner. Yes. Yeah, and you have all the colors in one place. That will be overnutrition. Uh, uh, I think a that will be, yeah, yeah. Will, will be overnutrition, okay. yeah. Especially if you're having that on a daily basis, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you, you, you're doing a lot of waste. Okay, yeah. all yeah. right, so, so just ensure that you have variety of colors per week. Per week. Which is yes. good for you. Okay, absorption part. Now, the absorption part. Mm -hmm. This is what happens. Uh, you've, you've eaten all the foods that you actually need to eat, so you, you supplied, your food choices is, is right. Mm -hmm. uh, then the food gets to the tummy, okay. but uh, absorption happens between the small intestines, mm -hmm. uh, some bit in the tummy, but mm -hmm. small intestines mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but you're not getting you know, the proper absorption. So okay. what's happening in there? Uh, for someone who stayed a long time mm -hmm. without having detoxed, mm -hmm. then there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Let me try and explain that. Okay. Um, the tummy, okay, let me not start with the tummy. Okay. Uh, ever seen a baby who has mucus, mm -hmm. and, then, and then the mucus tends to stick because mm -hmm. maybe, uh, mm -hmm. yes. so it sticks. Mm -hmm. And for it to be removed, they mm -hmm. need a wet cloth, mm -hmm. otherwise it can even rip off the, yeah. the, uh, the, the, the skin. Mm -hmm. so, 
that is mucus from the nostrils. Mm -hmm. Now the tummy has the most amount of mucus on any part of the body. Mm -hmm. So it has the most amount of mucus. Okay. And what happens is, as we take foods over time, mm -hmm. uh, it tends to secrete this mucus mm -hmm. and it tends to flow into the uh, small intestines, mm -hmm. especially for people who do a lot of proteins, especially animal protein. Because mm -hmm. for, for protein to be digested, it requires acid. Mm -hmm. And that acid is in the stomach okay. and that is why it secretes muc mucus mm -hmm. so that it doesn't uh, eat up the walls yeah, of the, the, walls of the, yeah, of the, st of okay. the stomach actually. Okay. Yeah. But over time that mucus also tends to flow mm -hmm. and get into the small intestines. Okay. Now when it gets in there it doesn't form what forms on the skin. Mm -hmm. It forms some sort of a rubber mm -hmm. and that tends to line up the wall. Mm -hmm. So the pl same place where you are supposed to, you know, be absorbing mm -hmm. has now been covered. Blocked, yeah. So nutrients will come. Yes, you are having the nutrients, mm -hmm. but you will take them elsewhere. Yeah, it other. will not be yes. absorbed. Okay. Yes. So you need to detox. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to detoxing, what, what I would say is do something. This is what you need to look for in a detox. Mm -hmm. Uh, number one, it, ha it must have fiber in it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know how well pills do, because mm -hmm. I wonder where they're getting their fiber from. Their fiber from, yeah. Uh, but you need something that is like a scouring agent. Mm -hmm. Think of, uh, this is a pipe in here. Mm -hmm. So the same way you clean up a bottle, mm -hmm. you put in, you know, a uh, scotch bright in there mm -hmm. and then some bit of water and then mm -hmm. you sush a bit. Yeah. So it's the same, same thing we want to do. So you must put some sort of a scotch bright or yeah. a scouring agent in mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. that tends to scrape the walls mm -hmm. and then flushed out. Okay. So you have to watch out for that. So a powder, mm -hmm. something, you know, uh, 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 a smoothie of some sort. Mm -hmm. Yes, that would, that that would do. do. Okay. Um, then you also need to watch out for when you're detoxing, there's something called uh, beneficial bacteria. Mm -hmm. So there's some, some sort of uh, live activity mm -hmm. happening in there. So okay. there are bacteria that we actually need mm -hmm. and we need to create an environment for them that is conducive for their, for their being there. Mm -hmm. Now, um, those bacteria behave more so like fruit flies. Okay. Fruit flies are those flies that come when you have a fruit that is yes. almost beginning to go bad mm -hmm. and some flies come, tiny flies mm -hmm. come. Mm -hmm. Now to get rid of them, you can spray about okay. and kill them, okay. but the others will come because mm -hmm. the, con the, environment the environment is, con is, conducive, is conducive for them. For them. Okay. But if you throw out the, uh, the, the, say, whatever the agent is, mm -hmm. or you throw out the fruit, mm -hmm. what happens is over time they just disappear. Okay. So it's the same, same thing in here. So if we create an environment conducive for those bacteria, they will come. Mm -hmm. So the detox must be able to create that. So okay. they're called probiotic okay. detoxes, mm -hmm. yes. So it must be a probiotic. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that is what you need to watch out for. Okay. So when you detox and do as regularly, if you haven't detoxed in a long time, mm -hmm. then I would say do a detox that is every day mm -hmm. uh, for about seven days. Okay. Uh, then from there on, begin to, you know, just detox maybe once a, once week. a week. Or when okay. you know Leo mm -hmm. Mekula, mm -hmm. yeah, now you can, you know, detox, detox. The de that day or okay. the following day you can detox. All right. Okay. Yeah, so that helps with absorption. Okay. Assimilation. Now assimilation. Okay. Now assimilation happens like this. Um, let me say the, f the foods have been absorbed. Mm -hmm. Now they are running in your in your blood, mm -hmm. so they're being carried in your blood, okay. and they're ready for use. Mm -hmm. So they're ready for uptake into the cells. Mm -hmm. But now, supposing this is a cell, so by this I mean this is the surface of the cell. Mm -hmm. So cells have a membrane, mm -hmm. like a, a cloth. Eh? Mm -hmm. So that membrane, assuming this is it, but the membrane is unable to take in to the other side because okay. they just don't, you know, there's no gate where you, you know, mm -hmm. hey, what's up, I, mm -hmm. I'm here. Okay. Yeah. So they have to be absorbed, mm -hmm. but the cell is unable to absorb them. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, because the membrane has a problem. Mm -hmm. So that is where we go back to what I was talking about, lipids. Mm -hmm. Now, lipids and, and the kind of fats that you're taking mm -hmm. determine the kind of membrane that you have on your cell. Okay. So if you're doing uh, natural fats, natural fats, then be sure that your membrane mm -hmm. is working. Okay. But if you're having processed fats, okay. uh, now we have a problem. Yeah. And, and, and the problem primarily comes from mm -hmm. uh, when, when fats are processed, mm -hmm. let me just talk about that. When mm -hmm. fats are processed, they create a particular branch of fats called trans fats mm -hmm. or transformed fats. Mm -hmm. And what those transformed fats do, when they come, they still build up the membrane of the cell, mm -hmm. 
but they are not as fluid because the the cell needs to be you know it can like an octopus it can yeah, change it can shape change can shape do all that yeah. so it needs to be able to do that mm -hmm. but when transformed fats come in they tend to be rigid mm -hmm. a and and when the cell is trying to move mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. it can break yeah so instead of being fluidy and squishy and all that, it, it, comes it yeah, and breaks. Yeah, okay. and, breaks. Okay. and it is unable to perform its mm -hmm. function. So mm -hmm. because of that, mm -hmm. then that is where, again, mm -hmm. you have nutrients running around yes. in your blood, but, but they're not being used up. So okay, that or is going to where they're supposed to be. Yes. Okay, so that tells you, and most of us that, um, actually most of us who think that malnutrition is only maybe a specific kind of people yes. or from a specific region but like we said it affects anybody it affects all anybody. right now we address malnutrition in children um but before we get into adults just very briefly what are some of the signs and symptoms of malnutrition how do i tell that this person is malnourished and this one is okay okay um you you can tell it from different places okay. uh you can tell someone who's malnourished mm -hmm. from say they have uh weak bones mm -hmm. number one so if if your bones break easily, that's number one. Mm -hmm. You can tell someone who's malnourished by the color of their hair. Okay. So if it begins to change color mm -hmm. and it is losing color, it looks like a vumbi. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you can tell. All right. You can also look at your nails. Mm -hmm. if, if they are white, if mm -hmm. they are more white than they are, say, pink, mm -hmm. then that's also another sign that there's okay. something you're lacking. Okay. All right. If uh, something now like kwasha mm -hmm. you know, so there's all that. Mm -hmm. If, if uh, your skin can also tell you if it is too rough or it is not, you know, radiant and, and glowy, mm -hmm. that's another sign. If it mm -hmm. is scaly sort of, mm -hmm. that should also tell you that you're mm -hmm. lacking, okay. you know, one, two, three things. All right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. Now, um, let's address malnutrition. Can, can first of all, adults, um, you don't get malnutrition? And two, um, let's start with, with pregnant women. There was a question um, only on that, let's say a pregnant woman, if she doesn't, let's say, take um, proper nutrients, can, can that affect, or can she, let's say, give birth to a baby who's malnourished straight from, from birth? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, very more so. Okay. Uh, and I think that is, if, if we, even if we put our common sense to it, you'll mm -hmm. see actually it is possible, because mm -hmm. where else shall the baby yeah. Get, get you the know the yeah, yeah the nutrients apart from the mother mm -hmm. so when when a mother is you know when you when you're expectant mm -hmm. or no, when a, when a woman is expectant okay. uh, i think it is very important that uh, they provide for their own and provide for, for their, their baby child, yeah. so their nutrition should be at least one and a half times mm -hmm. No, not twice as much, mm -hmm. but at least one and a one half. And a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the baby again doesn't. You're not take, eating for two yeah. adults. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're eating for one and, yes. and another one who's okay. coming up. All right. So basically, mm -hmm. uh, if they watch, uh, and, and I love this general rule, mm -hmm. if you observe the colors, mm -hmm. and, and for, for a normal person, it's a fist size, mm -hmm. uh, a week. So for a pregnant expectant woman, uh, it, would, it should be not more than, you know, two fists, mm -hmm. but somewhere in the range of, you know, between one and one and a half. One and a half is, you know, mm -hmm. very, very good mm -hmm. in a week. Okay. When you observe the colors, mm -hmm. you, you're safe. Okay. It's, it's as simple as that. Okay. Yes. All right. And when we talk about colors, you know, there's some people who, let's say, for example, rice, they make rice and then put some sort of food color in it. No, no. <laughs> that, is no. Color. that is not the no. case. Okay. Now, malnutrition in adults. How the that happen because most people will be like but see we eat I mean see we have let's say three meals a day for those who can who can you mm. know afford that mm -hmm. and for those who can't probably would say see we have let's say like two meals in a day so how does malnutrition happen in adults uh, again uh, they would fall in either of those three categories okay. that I mentioned mm. so mostly I find is um, the food choices mm. so someone is not very uh, and even if they are aware and sensitive about the food choices mm -hmm they don't have the availability or they're not accessible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the accessibility is a bit of an issue and, and that makes them compromise, mm -hmm. which is understandable. Okay. But now when, when you stop that and, and look at, let me, let me be keen on mm -hmm. what colors am I doing? Mm -hmm. So uh, first you'll find out that there are as many colors. Mm -hmm. They're about as many colors as there are the rainbow. Mm -hmm. So uh, about seven. Mm -hmm. So if you do all those, mm -hmm. then you're getting rid of you know yeah. or you're putting yourself in a safer place yeah 
then you'll be dealing now with the issue of I'm having the nutrients, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. but my system in there mm -hmm. is, is messed up. Mm -hmm. um, let me put it like this. Um, if you have, if you stay, and, and, and I think the, the, the main contributor to why adults are mal malnourished mm -hmm. is the colon, the, mm -hmm. the digestive mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. They haven't detoxed that. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to imagine this. Mm -hmm. uh, how often you eat at home mm -hmm. and you cook mm -hmm. and how often you clean those utensils. Yeah. You clean them as much as you as eat. You, yes. But how often do you clean this utensil? Mm -hmm. P perhaps yes yeah several Never, sometimes yeah, yeah. <laughs> so imagine what's happening yeah. imagine after after you've you've cooked some meal mm -hmm. and and you you know you scooped on and you've uh you know uh served mm -hmm. but then the sufuria you look at the sufuria and how you know slime it has become mm -hmm. because of the salad and all that mm -hmm. now that same mm -hmm. is the same okay it's what happening yes in it's what's inside. happening in here okay so you're contributing to all that mm -hmm. and and when you look at i've 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 had the uh, privilege of seeing the inside of a, of a, of a colon mm -hmm. and the inside air mm -hmm. and, and it's ver not very nice because okay. uh, if you look at the intestines of a, of a child mm -hmm. they are sp squeaky clean mm -hmm. they, they are wonderful to look at yeah but when you look at and now an adult, adult who hasn't detoxed in a while, <laughs> yeah. it's t it tends to even be black, like soot. You ever mm -hmm. seen a chimney up there? Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. soot, mm -hmm. the way over time, yeah. it begins to form mm -hmm. and actually the smoke has mm -hmm. become solid. Yeah. Imagine that smoke mm -hmm. becoming solid and has clung onto yeah, the, on the wall. On the walls, it's yeah. the same, same thing in here. Mm -hmm. That all this that we're eating is capable of mm -hmm. clinging to the wall mm -hmm. and adhere to the wall mm -hmm. so that it becomes impossible to have food mm -hmm. uh, absorbed to the other side. Yeah. So there is repelling instead of absorption. Mm -hmm. and, and that is what we want to avoid. Okay. So for someone who hasn't, and, and I will, if you haven't detoxed, yes. if you haven't detoxed, this is the time to seriously think about consider it, it. Yes, okay. consider that and 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 do it as as often as, as possible as you can. yes all right okay now um the signs and symptoms do they present themselves the same as they would in in children like in adults is is it the same as it would in in a child uh, i i believe it is mm -hmm. i believe it is because mm -hmm. um say lack of vitamin c mm -hmm. which causes causes scurvy yeah. uh if a child lacks vitamin c and an adult lacks vitamin c mm -hmm. the results are primarily the, the same, same. Okay. yeah it's just that perhaps here mm -hmm. there will be much more uh because the child mm -hmm. is is much more vulnerable yeah. to you know scurvy mm -hmm. and the immunity is not as high mm -hmm. as seeing the adult, adult but okay. the symptoms are almost more, similar more or less yes. the same. all right so let's talk about the, the consequences or health impact of malnutrition and what is the long-term um, you know effect of the same now um the long-term effect of malnutrition mm -hmm. at worst it kills okay at worst mm -hmm. uh mildly it deforms mm -hmm. uh and and I, the immediate mm -hmm. effect is treatable and, okay. and can be, you know, reversed. It can be reversed, okay. Uh, but when it gets to the place where it is, um, you know, becoming that, mm -hmm. you, that you're deformed, mm -hmm. it is a bit scary. Mm -hmm. uh, say, supposing, um, let's, let's use like the brain, for instance. Mm -hmm. If you're not supplying the proper uh, nutrients for the brain, especially mm -hmm. when the child is growing up, okay. then there's a problem. And the problem is that the brain will not develop mm -hmm. properly. So the infrastructure is mm -hmm. not uh, as good as it ought as, to be. Yeah. Uh, think of it this way. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a super highway, mm -hmm. uh, which is an infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Because of its uh, uh, size and, and, and you know, its capacity, mm -hmm. it is able to hold more cars yeah. and it is able to you know, process much faster mm -hmm. than say if we didn't have. Mm -hmm. We'd be having more traffic yes. and more, you know, because if, if we didn't have it. It's the mm -hmm. same, same thing. Mm -hmm. So because the infra infrastructure did not completely develop, okay. then be, uh, there will be traffic up here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the pro that, by that I mean the mm -hmm. child becomes slow. Okay. So they process a bit slower. Slow. Why the infrastructure yeah. does not mm -hmm. accommodate mm -hmm. what the activity requires. Okay. So when you look at it like that, mm -hmm. it really becomes uh, a, a, a dire situation mm -hmm. and, and something that we really need to put our, our minds into it and get very deliberate about mm -hmm. the choices that we make. Yeah, we make. All right, yeah. okay, and aside from, from the brain, um, any other part of the body that becomes affected by malnutrition? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, 
let's, let's talk about uh, something like arthritis, for instance. Okay. Uh, arthritis happens because of... Lack of calcium? Uh, not quite. Okay. Lack of calcium is okay. uh, what happens. All right. It is a sort of a result. Okay. Uh, but it happens because of high acidity. Mm -hmm. High acidity. Mm -hmm. So when the acidity is high, mm -hmm. And, and truly, it is because of somewhat calcium, mm -hmm. because calcium is ca sort of an, uh, an alkaline agent. Mm -hmm. And what happens is the, the body begins mm -hmm. to eat up mm -hmm. the already formed bone yeah. so that it supplies or it offsets the uh, acidity that is too high. Mm -hmm. So when acidity goes up, the body begins to eat up your bone. Mm -hmm. So you become, you get, your bones get brittle, yes. and at some point, mm -hmm. Uh, you can even easily easily break. Yeah. At worst, mm -hmm. you can even eat up the entire bone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the body is, is funny. Yeah. Uh, here is what it does. It wants to survive. It wants to live. It mm -hmm. wants to provide for everything that uh, every su organ, sustains every, yes. life. Yes. Yeah. But when it notices that the, co the environment that it is in mm -hmm. has become harsh to life, mm -hmm it tends to begin eating itself up mm -hmm. to sustain life to the vital places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it begins to shut down certain areas mm -hmm. and mostly from the peripherals coming up mm -hmm. to just sustain up here and up yeah. here. Yeah. So it begins to shut down okay. and, and discard okay. that this is not very important. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can use yeah, some we, of yeah, the we, components we, in there. Yeah, we can do away else. with mobility. Let's yes. just do away with him walking. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. So that we can do with him living and mm -hmm. him breathing. Mm -hmm. So it begins to eat up those mm -hmm. places to provide for this other one. Mm -hmm. So it, it works in a weird. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, as long as it's, it survives. Yes. Okay. Now we talked about it being reversible. Um, what are some of the ways, let's say someone is... is malnourished or yes. even a child um, w and, and let's say the, the parent or any family members watching us right now and thinking okay so let's say my child is, is malnourished and or this other person like a family member and we don't know what to do what are some of the ways that they can reverse uh, number one is I would, I would ask them to find out what exactly mm -hmm. is the body telling them that they're lacking okay so diagnose properly. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if it's the, say, pale fingers mm -hmm. that they're looking at, mm -hmm. they'll be talking about low blood count. Mm -hmm. So how do we replenish that? Okay. Uh, if it is, say, something like, you know, scaly skin, mm -hmm. then we'll be talking about vitamin C. Mm -hmm. How do we scale that up? Mm -hmm. So if it is a uh, kwashia core, mm -hmm. it will be speaking to something. Mm -hmm. So when you diagnose it properly, okay. then you begin to supply mm -hmm. to it over time. Mm -hmm. Again. Because it is reversible, doesn't mean that you put in the measures today and tomorrow yeah. you have the results. Yeah. It is over time. Okay. But then it is what you do consistently over time, mm -hmm. knowing that every single bit of it mm -hmm. is contributing to the ultimate effect that I'm looking for. Yeah. So um, I would advise them, get the diagnosis right. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you'll be able to treat it properly. Mm -hmm. But ground rule, mm -hmm. the, the rule of thumb mm -hmm. is colors. Okay. Uh, again, just, just get your colors. Insisting on yes, the colors. Yes. Okay. Just get your colors, mm -hmm. as many as they are. Mm -hmm. The body will begin to work it mm -hmm. out itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All much. right. And, and that leads me to treatment. Um, let's say someone comes to your facility and like, and, and of course you can tell this just by seeing maybe the color of their hair or maybe the, the color of the nails or Kwashoko, something like that. So what happens, like what's the treatment process for the same? Aside from the part where you look at, let's say the symptom and you maybe supply what, what you need. Aside from that, are there other treatment options? Yes, there are. Mm -hmm. Apart from foods, uh, here's, here's how do, I would want to put it. Mm -hmm. uh, foods are, are a nice way, they're therapeutic, okay. they are. Uh, but the same way that they build gradually is the same way that they heal mm -hmm. gradually. Mm -hmm. But if your situation or if the situation has gone a bit uh, overboard mm -hmm. and it is a bit critical, okay. then we need something that moves just as fast mm -hmm. to offset the situation. Yeah. So here we get into place, uh, categories of things like, that we call superfoods. Mm -hmm. So superfoods are, say, they, they are processed foods, mm -hmm. but they are processed so that they increase the efficacy mm -hmm. or the effectiveness mm -hmm. of what they must. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I would talk about superfoods, mm -hmm. uh, which mostly comes in the form of supplements. Okay. You can you can get that. Mm -hmm. uh, then I would also talk about uh, get to a doctor 
uh, let them advise in terms of now, if, if it is really dire, mm -hmm. let them get now, uh, you know, a dosage, a prescription, yeah. okay. so that they get drugs, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, all right, don't, don't, okay. You can do it at home, but if it doesn't work, go yeah. to a hospital, yes. is that recommended? Yes. Yes. But focus more on the colors. Yes. Okay, all right. So very, very briefly, in 30 seconds, what are some of the ways that we can do to prevent malnutrition, both in adults and in children, very briefly? All right. Uh, number one, detox. Mm -hmm. Number one. Mm -hmm. uh, for children who are just beginning to be weaned, mm -hmm. they actually don't need to detox. They are quite clean. They're doing well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically supply mm -hmm. uh, as, as many colors as you're able to. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I, would, I would point out that. Number one, supply as many colors as you as, can as in you a can. week. Okay. Secondly, if you are 10 years plus, think about detoxing. Mm -hmm. uh, detox at least every quarter. Mm -hmm. Every quarter you, you're doing a detox. Okay. Right. Uh, then after that, I will talk about um, try and get your uh, the macronutrients and the micronutrients. And, the micronutrients, uh, yeah. and by that is especially the fats. Mm -hmm. uh, fats are really essential. They they honestly are mm -hmm. essential. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I want to just briefly. Right. Uh, I don't know if this is very brief. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> With fats, mm -hmm. with fats, what I, what I want to point out is there has been a myth about say, things like don't do too much egg because it has cholesterol and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. I, I would advise people don't worry about cholesterol. Okay. Honestly, don't. Uh, uh, I, would, I would rather you just do the egg, mm -hmm. let the body worry about cholesterol. Okay, yes. it can take care of itself. It can take care of itself. Okay. So long as you're doing natural fats, mm -hmm. so long as you're doing natural fats, mm -hmm. then you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, mm -hmm. and have natural fats in your diet. Okay, Insist as, as much as you yes. can. Yes. Every meal, that would be okay? If, if you can if in you every can. meal, yes. Okay. Especially if mm -hmm. you are the kind of person who uh, whose work is mm -hmm. sit behind a desk, desk mostly, mm -hmm. that you're not up and about, mm -hmm. you're not an athlete, mm -hmm. then your diet should be at least 40% fat. Okay. Yes. All right. Fat percentage should be the high. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, George, for coming over today. And of course, we appreciate it. Thank you so much for the insight on, on malnutrition, which I think is very, very important. And takeaway message today is colors. Just look at the colors and you are good to go. So thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Winnie Lubam. And of course, on behalf of our Stella team, who made the show a success, we wish you a lovely day ahead. See you again tomorrow.